And so without further ado, let us say hello to the California kid, Uriah Faber, who all of a sudden is back and is like too big time. He's showing up late. His video isn't working. What's going on here, Uriah? <laughs> well, I'm actually in training. Okay. I know it's hard for you to imagine, Ariel, but we have our practice. Pro practice it ends at 11.05 to 11.15. So this is a scheduling disaster. Oh, but here we are. We made it. I'm sorry. I didn't. I, I thought that we were all good. I, I should have known when you didn't write me back yesterday, but I guess you don't text me back anymore. You're, you know, a big UFC fighter now. So I guess things have changed for us. <laughs> yeah, man, that's uh, that might be the case. I actually have 264 or 646 unread text messages. So I apologize. But why? What's going on there? <clears throat> nose, why? nose to the grindstone. Why, was that a are you, was that a, a knock on my nose? No, that wasn't. You okay. got a great nose. That that thing's famous. It's like my chin. Yes, I appreciate that. Iconic. A, that is a great comparison. Uh, why so many unread text messages? Doesn't that give you stress? Like that would give me anxiety. You know, I don't know. I think it just accumulates over time. Um, I'm not sure how long that is, but like if you got a if you got your your day filled with action. Yes. And then you stop to go look at your phone and there's a bunch of text messages. You get to the first ones in your meeting or whatever. The stuff can just pile up and so you may not get back to them at the right time. Especially now you throw a baby in the mix. Yeah. Which, you know, it takes my, my attention, etc. Yeah, I'm not sure, man. It's, it's kind of nuts, actually. I need to maybe spend a day and go through those. <laughs> you know, one thing that I'd love for Apple to do one of these days, you know how when you have an email, you can mark it as unread, so to remind yourself to get back to it? You can read it, but remind yourself, I feel like they should do that with text messages as well. Mark it as unread. I'll read it, but I'll get back to it later, but I just want to remind myself to respond, so I'll mark it. They don't do that, and it bothers me. Well, I mean, that sounds just a lot like a lot more work, so. Okay, fair enough. I'd rather just on the time but what's up buddy how you been uh, that's well this is the interview right here we're done um no i wanted to talk to you about this fight <laughs> against ricky simone because I, I wrote earlier today for espn.com i don't like this fight i'm not a fan of this fight i feel like the ufc is building ricky simone off of you and when a legend comes back especially in his hometown you give him a fight to get his mojo back you ease him back in there now i know you're a very prideful guy and i'm not saying i'm not saying that you can't win this fight obviously it's a very winnable fight you're one of the greatest ever but why with all due respect to Ricky Simone, he's not a household name. So why not give you another veteran, make it a big fight, maybe, you know, main event, whatever the case is, and then you go on your way. Why are you fighting a guy who's like 15 years younger than you? Well, <clears throat> like who? Well, my pitch was like the Cub Swansons of the world. Yeah, the UFC, the UFC said no to that. Um, why? Then there was Cron Gracie, which... Uh, um. But you know this is a, this is a sport where, especially in the UFC, they they're not trying to make a show out of it. They want to they want to have you know good guys go against good guys. So you know if you if you're nervous about it, Ariel, go back and watch my last fight, and even the fight before that, uh, and hope, maybe that'll put you to rest a little bit. It's not so much that I'm nervous about it. I hope I hope you don't take this the wrong way. I just feel like from a matchmaking perspective. You know, I, I want to get you a fight against a name to say to the world, Uriah Faber is back. You know what I mean? How many people in Sacramento know who Ricky is? And and that's not a knock on him necessarily. It's just that he's young. He's 26 years old. He hasn't had anywhere near the amount of fights that you've had. Like, does yeah. this fight get your juices so, going? Um, you know, I'm in a scenario where the whole reason I'm fighting it is because my juices are flowing to fight. And so, uh, yeah, you know, it's like you, you're coming out like, like it's almost like I'm giving myself a birthday present. Um, it's something that I love to do. Obviously I haven't been out of the gym at all. Um, when I, when I stopped fighting, I was feeling amazing. Actually just watched my last two fights last night and it was fun to watch. Um, so, you know, obviously I'd like there to be some big, massive opponent out there, but like, look at the lay of the land. Um, Ricky Simone's an exciting fighter. Matchup wise, it's going to be fireworks, absolutely. And Cub Swanson, he's he's on a little bit of a slide. Uh, possibly that's why it wouldn't mean anything for the division at 145 or at 135. Is is kind of the sentiment that I got. I, I was okay with that fight. Um, <clears throat> staying up away. They also talked about the Cron Gracie. Obviously, he's he's uh, got an awesome name and, and has some momentum. But he actually trains out with the Diaz brothers, which. I think that might have a little bit of a factor there. 
Um, but what are some other names besides those two? I mean, those are a couple of names right there. I, I thought that that one made a lot of sense. But, but, but give me, give me, give me your, uh, the, cause I was, I'm doing the same thing you're doing and, and saying, okay, who is the big name? But there aren't really many big names right now in the 135 pound division. Are there? Uh, what about like a Hafel Sunsau? Yeah, that would be a good one. I mean, you you have a history with him. I mean, not a ton of people know his name either, though. Really, well, he's headline shows, right? Yeah. He's a perennial contender. Yeah, that could be a fight. Maybe that'll be the next one. All right, fair enough. Listen, I don't want to rain on your parade. I was just looking out for a brother. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was very sweet of you. I feel safer with you in my back. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Um, how was it against Nikki Ryan? Uh, fighting someone that was like what like 20 something years younger than you um and going the distance with him what was that experience like uh, it was fun man i like nicky ryan and and uh his family i like the the uh the focus and and the all-in attitude they have about jiu-jitsu you know that's only my fourth time doing a jiu-jitsu competition in my whole life and all the different rules i think like an adcc butt scooting like he was butt scooting is would have gotten him disqualified and then just kind of listen to the commentary and stuff and uh i don't know i'd like to see some different ra- uh, rules changes in polaris to make it make sure that you know it opens up a little bit but it was it was fun it was uh got me one uh ankle lock attempt and i got out of it and other than that I was just kind of pushing the pace trying to to wear him out and get an opening for a choke but we had rolled five months prior, and in that roll, he became aware of my chokes. I became aware of his back takes, and even if I were to stand up, he wouldn't even commit to grabbing onto the leg. He was shooting underneath and going for like leg attacks and lifts. So um, it was it was it was fun. My my toes hurt because I was rubbing my toes on the canvas the whole time. Um, felt really good in the match as far as conditioning goes, and and uh, would like to do some more of those. Those are fun. Ultimately, do you recall the moment where you said, all right, I'm back. This retirement is over. <clears throat> well, I've been talking about it uh, for a while. I actually made a couple posts, like kind of alluding to it around New Year's. Yeah. I said, you know, the, 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 this year is going to be about mentoring, competing, and being a great dad. And that was actually before I had my baby and everything else. And uh, I've been thinking about it. I mean, I've been, th- I, you know, you think about it like periodically, but I think over the last probably year, I've been thinking about it more and more. And for me, that's the reason why I stopped in the first because I was thinking about retiring. Um, just had a lot going on. I'm, I'm kind of in a new place. And, and we talked about this on your show prior where uh, I feel amazing. My I haven't slipped at all in, in my training. When I left the sport, I think my, my second to last fight, I was ranked number two in the world. Um, after I lost to Rivera, uh, that put me at, number six or number seven and had that 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 loss against uh or that win against um you know one punch picket so i it wasn't because i i had to stop that i stopped i just felt like it and, and the same thing now where i've been thinking about it i've been itching to fight it sounds like a lot of fun and uh i think it's time if this event july 13th wasn't in sacramento would you have come back a little later <laughs> Yeah, I was already talking to the guys about coming back. I didn't even know they were coming in Sacramento. Oh. Um, so that was just like, okay, maybe rush the process a little bit. But, um, yeah, I, I want to do some fights. I, like I said, when I turned 40, I turned my, on my birthday. I, I said I actually said on your show that I was thinking about doing fights once I had that birthday. Right. Um, and do you feel like it's different? And now that you're a dad and you're clearly loving being a dad, fatherhood seems to be – uh, treating you very well. Like, do you feel like your 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 mental approach to the fight is different? That you're fighting for different things. <clears throat> I wouldn't say that necessarily. Just, just a, uh, you know, a little bit more of a purpose. I always have found a way to to have a great purpose when I'm fighting. You know, the reason why where I was competing was because of the lifestyle that I enjoyed and and the all the things surrounding the sport that, that motivated me. But of course, as you know, being a, a guy with a family, it changes a little bit. You realize, you know, that like when I, when I stopped fighting, it was like, okay, uh, 
thing is it kind of got stale. It was hard to get my the, the hair on my back of my neck standing up for fights. I kept challenging myself. I'd go up to uh, to Frankie Edgar, you know, go up and wait to fight Frankie Edgar, go down and wait, just trying to find the 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 excitement. And um, I think that's been added a little bit back with with the with the new baby in 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 the in the hood. By the way, we saw that great picture of you, Cody, and and Chad. Uh, is Chad done? We haven't heard from him. What's going on there? I don't know what Chad's doing. I mean, Chad stays in amazing shape, and, and he's still in here in the gym on occasion uh, doing his thing, but he's spending a lot of time with his brand-new baby, and he also has his, his fins and feathers business. So I don't think he's ruled out a fight possibly, but but uh, as of right now, I don't think he's got anything on the horizon or thinking about it. So um, uh, you'd have to ask him on his exact plans, but – um, right now, he's definitely not focusing on the fight on the fight world. Is your plan to stick around for TJ? I know it's it's a while; it's a year and a half. But is that the goal to stick around to to meet him when he comes back? Um, I mean, I have to see how I feel. You know, I, I uh, you know, I, I, where I feel right now, I feel pretty pretty incredible. Um, who knows how I'll feel at that time? I've I've always been kind of a uh, a late developer and somebody that's always had had good health, so. Um, it's all going to be about timing and, and, and me. Now, if he comes back, it'll be, yeah, I guess a year and a half. That's not that long. So so we'll have to see how that, that, that pans out. And um, You know, one of the reasons, and Dana's talked about it also, and I talked to Merlo Bustamante and some of the other guys, the guys that don't cheat, the guys that don't do EPO and HGH and microdosing testosterone or whatever the hell the kids are doing these days, have a better longevity joints uh you know just body intact you're you're operating as your body's supposed to so um for me i think that's part of the reasons why i've been in the top my entire career in the top echelon the top 10 the top two the top three the top one um my entire career and uh so i i feel good we'll have to see at that point i mean that's when you think about big fights uh, for me, in, in the weight class, I mean, Kron was exciting, the, just the thought of it, because there's a lot of hype around him right now and, and the history with his family. Um, but, you know, there's no history like the TJ Dillashaw history, that's for sure. Are you the co-main event? <clears throat> yeah, I believe so. Why not the main event? Uh, well, there's talks to have me do the main event. Honestly, you get paid the same amount, um, but you just fight two more rounds. And, uh, you know, that'd be, that'd be, uh, it'd be cool, I guess, but I'd rather fight three rounds, get my feet wet. And, uh, you know, I, I, I that, do you know who the main event is? I can, I know the lad is, I don't know who the other girl is. It's a uh, Jermaine Durandamy, former UFC women's featherweight champion. She beat Holly Holm, but then got stripped. Yeah. So those two, I mean, <clears throat> she got stripped. Yeah, because she didn't want to fight. She didn't want to fight Cyborg. You don't remember that story? Oh, well, I don't blame her on that one. Cyborg's yeah. the beat. Well, she'd have to go up a weight? No, she was the women's featherweight champion, so but it was a weird thing. She said she didn't want to fight a former drug user. It was a, it was a bizarre thing, and she's kind of taken some heat for it. And I think that's why when the announcement – I think it's a great fight, but I think some people were a little <laughs> underwhelmed because she still hasn't regained the, uh, the trust of the, the crowd, so to speak, the fans. Yeah, I don't know. But I'll, I'll tell you what. In Sacramento, I'm going to be fighting my butt off three rounds against a young, tough kid. Uh, I'm excited for that. You know, Ricky Simone, just watching him fight, um, he reminds me of a younger version of me where where he pushes the pace. He doesn't get tired. He's He's got a well-rounded game. He does have terrible hair, so that that doesn't count. But uh, <laughs> but his his mentality is awesome. So I'm excited for this fight. And um, you know, I, I was thinking they might have had a different main event. There we're waiting around to see who it would be. I, I don't know if there's other matchups that could have been thrown in that mix. But um, yeah, you know, I, I spoke to Dana about it, and he said, "Hey, these girls are." top in the world at what they do and so it's deserving of a main event i said all right i mean as far as name recognition goes i could use some help to, to get the thing pumping but um he thinks it's going to be a good fight he compared th this fight to when when he made ronda rousey a main event 
I don't quite see that, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I could, <laughs> I'm going to get behind it and do my part. You okay. know what I mean? <laughs> I like your, uh, positive approach to it all. Um, are, are, we, <laughs> yeah. are we, are we going with California kid? Are we still sticking with that? Yes, sir. Yes. I like it. Don't worry about that kid. I mean, it's young at heart. You got to be young at heart, right? That's what's, that's yeah. what matters. I mean, man. Hey, yeah. what's going on? Your new show. I feel like your energy is low, man. What's going on? You okay? My energy, really? You're the energy is low. What? What's going on? My dude? energy you is low. Right? We spent ten minutes talking about text messages earlier. I thought that's one of the finest, finest like ten minute stretches of this year for me. <laughs> now I'm gonna be thinking right, about this and feeling bad about yeah, it. Yeah, you're all self conscious. Oh, yeah, jeez, Louise. Um, all right, now my energy is low. Okay, so let me ask you this: Why did Cynthia Calvillo leave Alpha Male? Uh you know, you'd have to ask her on that. She actually sat down with me and sounds like some personal relationships. Uh, you know, I know that, that she had gone after her last win. You know, she's done her last two camps at our gym, but like slowly been pulling away. You know, Buckles has been doing like the, the uh, who's coming with me from uh, what's, what's, what's the movie? Oh, yes, I know the one. <laughs> with Tom Cruise. Yes. Uh, uh, Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. What's it called? Jerry Maguire. <laughs> yeah. He'd been, do he been doing that scene where he leaves the office for about two and a half years tugging on the poor girl. So uh, then he went around and, and when she was doing her PR, went and did a bunch of interviews with her and basically talked crap on the team. And I think it maybe made Cynthia uncomfortable. Some of the coaches, um, you know, around, they've been like, you know, being, being a little bit awkward. And she just came in and was like, you know what? I have some personal relationships. Uh, like I said, I don't want to get into her personal stuff. And she's like, I'm going to do my, do my thing. I know that she's talked to Fabio and David Klingsheim and, and Josiah McHale on our team who are all part of our team and trying to get some help there. But I'm not, I'm not really sure. I, it, I was sad to see it. I mean, Cynthia has been a, a product of our team for the last however many, six years, something like that. And she's, uh, you know, she's, she's a hard worker was always bringing positivity to the team and, and we wish her the best of luck. That was a, that was a good answer there. That was a good answer, Uriah. I like it. Much respect. Well done. <laughs> I wish people could see your face Thank right you. now, but because uh, I feel like you're smiling, uh, I just <laughs> I just sense it. But unfortunately, we can't see you, and that's unfortunate. You know, our our, our buddy, our mutual friend, Chael Sonnen, uh, actually trains with Ricky, and he told me that he's the best fighter that he's ever seen in practice. You know this? Oh, practice guys. I've I've seen a lot of those guys. Yeah, you have. I'm sure you have. So that that doesn't but, intimidate you. Practicing. No, who's he practicing against? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe Austin <laughs> Vanderford. You know him, right? I, I I trained with Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Austin's pretty tough. Yeah, Paige Van Zant. Yeah, Austin. Awesome. Chael Sonnen. Paige Van Zant stuff. Chael Sonnen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Paige Paige is a girl. Right. Austin's a two hundred five pounder, and Chael's a two hundred five pounder. So. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. He's, he looks like a tough fighter, man. All right. Uh, well, Uriah, I appreciate this. I'm sorry for screwing up your plans. Uh, welcome back officially. I'm looking forward to the fight July 13th. All my concerns have now been put to rest. I feel good about it all. Uh, congratulations again on, <laughs> on the, the lovely baby. Say hello to your parents for me. And uh, I hope to see you soon. And I wish you the best in training. Likewise, brother. Hope you're doing good. All right. There he is. The one and only right. Uriah okay. Faber, the California kid.